Uh, next up, we have introducing uh, Mod Lula with uh, Daniel Gruno. Exactly. Uh, good evening or afternoon. Uh, I'm Daniel, as uh, Justin just said. Uh, I'm a documentation writer and a Mod Lua developer for the HCPD server project. You can't hear me? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, well, okay. Um, as I said, I'm Daniel. I'm a Mod Lua developer and a documentation writer. And I'll be talking a bit about uh, Mod Lua, what it is, what Lua is, and uh, how you can use it. And possibly plug some of the uh, services that we have um, and that we use. So uh, these are the topics I will be covering. Uh, some stuff about Lua, why about Lua, setting it up, some small business logic, some authentication, uh, some scripting, and some case studies. And the, the case studies are not really case studies, it's just um, some descriptions of some services that we use uh, within the ASF that are driven by Lua. Uh, before we begin, text in purple is stuff that is in the trunk version of Mod Lua. Uh, and the charts have been made using uh, Lua JIT, which I will be explaining what is in a moment. Uh, you can tune into that uh, address to learn a bit about Mod Lua. And, uh, Please, 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 if you can, try, uh, just a second, uh, try using Madlua from the trunk. Uh, and don't be afraid, because it, it actually works, and it's got a lot of really cool features. So, um, okay, some, some stuff about Lua. It's a powerful, fast, lightweight, embeddable scripting language. It's as close as you can get to C or Java speed-wise and memory-wise, but still be dynamic. Um, and by dynamic, I mean it's interpreted, so you can change stuff without having to recompile. You can uh, set a variable uh, to a number and then change it to a string, uh, and so on and so on. It's used in everything from supercomputers to washing machines. I know this because my brother programs washing machines and he uses Lua for it. Uh, it's also used in, in VLC or Videolan and World of Warcraft, Minecraft, Traffic Server, Wireshark as uh, Alan talked about earlier. It's got a pretty simple syntax. I mean, uh, if you just look at the example, you can... Uh, how, how many of you have actually used Lua at all? One, two, uh, three, four, five? Uh, if you've been using C or PHP or whatever, you can probably make out uh, what that function, what this script does. It prints hello world. It sets two variables, one to a number, the number five, and one to a string or something. Uh, and after that, we have an array or actually a hash. Uh, and the special thing about the way is that it's one-based and not zero-based, so stuff starts at index one and not zero. But uh, once you have that pegged down, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, it supports all the cool stuff that you would expect from, yeah, well, from Perl and Java, I think, in version eight. Uh, and, and all the other program languages. It has closures. It can be object-oriented. It has an automatic garbage collector, so you don't need to malloc and free stuff. It has dynamic types, numbers, strings, booleans, uh, arrays, hashes, and nil, which is Portuguese for null. Um, and you can assign uh, a, a variable to be any of those types, and it will just automatic, automatically adjust itself. It has uh, something called meta tables, which is really cool stuff, but I will not be discussing that today because that would take a couple of hours to discuss. It has coroutines, which um, I have used in Mod Lua. Uh, you'll see it's in purple because it's in trunk. Uh, the filtering mechanisms we have in HTTPD. And it has some basic regular expressions called Lua patterns, which is um, basically the same as, uh, <coughs> as regex, but it's uh, only one-tenth the size of regex, so it's uh, 9.82 times faster. 
with some minor drawbacks. Um, this is probably one of the most often asked questions is how fast is it? Um, if anyone would care to venture a guess. Yeah, Alan? Pretty darn fast, yeah. Uh, I have this uh, graph, that sh uh, chart that shows uh, how fast it is on eight different standard performance measuring functions. It's uh, a logarithmic scale, because if it wasn't, it'll be, well, it would look pretty darn funny. Uh, but I've summed it up, and as you can see, compared to the other dynamic languages, Lua is quite fast. And if you use the Lua JIT, which I prefer to use, it's actually faster than Java on, on average. So you can run a, a lot of scripts uh, in the same time. Uh, you can see it's about, uh, well, 10 to 20 times as fast as PHP. So if you're considering adopting a new scripting language, you might consider using Mod Lua for that. Um, why should you use Mod Lua? Well, that's a, a good question, and I have a few answers. Um, it allows you to extend and modify your web server using Lua. Well, that's a simple explanation. Uh, you can respond to requests with the Lua scripts, much like PHP or ASP or CGI script and so on. You can change request metadata on the fly. This is quite like uh, what mod rewrite does, what mod alias does, what mod headers does, and, and so on. Everything within a request you can change. Um, you can set up custom access, authorization, authentication steps. Uh, I'll be showing a couple of examples of how you can do that. And you can even create a, well, rudimentary load balancer if you like. Uh, the quick handling, I'm not really going to go into. If you've ever developed a module for HTTPD, you will know what quick, hand quick handling is, um, and, and you can do that. Uh, and last but not least, you can filter the input and output if you use the trunk version of Modlu, and I'll be showing that as well. Um, in other words, you can write a module much like you, you would write a C module for uh, HTTPD, but you don't have to recompile the module, or restart HTTPD, check it, fix a bug, recompile, restart HTTPD, and so on and so on. So you can, uh, you can make a, a prototype of a C module pretty fast, and you can test, does this work? And if you then want to make a C module out of it, you can just write a C module that does exactly what the Lua module did. Um, you can create web applications, as I will be showing. Um, and you can do a lot of stuff that you could do in 2.2, but you can't do in 2.4 yet because Mod Perl, Mod Perl or Mod Python, uh, they do work, but they don't work for 2.4 yet. There are some patches, but it's not uh, official yet. So, yeah, you should use Mod Lua instead. <laughs> Uh, setting it up is pretty easy. Uh, it's a part of Apache HTTP Server 2.3 and later. Uh, you need Lua or Lua JIT, uh, and you can get that for pretty much any platform, Windows, FreeBSD, Linux, Mac, you name it, Solaris, uh, and so on. Uh, it only requires the read line library, so it's pretty easy to build, it takes about three or four seconds to build Lua. Um, if you want it to be built, uh, the mod Lua to be built um, while you're making uh, HTTPD from source, you can do it with the enable Lua tag, or you can use the enable mod shared equals really all. Or you can build it uh, using APXS by using the command line at the bottom. Uh, to load it, you just load it like you load any other module. You have your load module directive. Uh, and if you want to use uh, Lua web scripting, you would just uh, use your basic ad handler. And the tweaks I have below, uh, you should, well, get the slides or write them down because they're pretty important. I'll be showing later 
how much they matter uh, in terms of performance. Um, and well, let's start writing some scripts. Uh, there are two ways of uh, interacting with the mod Lua. You can either have your Lua something something handler uh, with a path to a script and a function name, or you can put your Lua script directly inside your HTTPD configuration like so. I personally prefer doing the former because uh, otherwise you would have to reload your configuration every time you change something, but you can do it. It's a possibility. Uh, all the functions, well, all the functions except for scripts, well, web applications are called through a Lua hook something directive. Uh, and it will, unless otherwise specified, look for a function named handle in your script. Uh, and this is an, an example handle function. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm either returning Apache 2.ok or I'm returning 404 in this uh, example handler, and that's because uh, you, uh, Lua scripts are expected to return uh, one of these Apache 2.ok or declined or done. If you watch the, S, the, the Speedy talk, you'll know that Speedy uses the done to circumvent the logging and the path translations and so on and so on. You can do that in Mod Lua as well to just say, okay, I handle this request. Do not do anything else. Uh, or you can just return uh, any HTTPD status code like 404 or 500 and, and so on and so on. You can also pull your uh, scripts into a single file. Uh, as you can see here, I have four different hooks uh, that all points to the same file, but they have different function names. Uh, as you can see over here, different function names. Uh, and in my file, I would just declare different functions. So when this hook gets called, it would call this function. And when this hook gets called, it would call this function. So you can, you can pull that uh, if you like. Um, let's look at some small business logic. Uh, this is mostly stuff you can already do uh, with mod rewrite or mod alias or authentication stuff and, and so on and so on. Um, first of all, you want to uh, invoke uh, whatever hook uh, you need to. Uh, that's a translate name hook. This is, for example, what mod rewrite or mod alias do. There's a map to storage, which is what the caching modules and proxy modules do. Or you can hook it to check access, user ID, and so on, or type checking, which nobody uses. But it's, <laughs> it's there nonetheless. Um, and let's see some examples. This is an example of rewriting the slash random to any random number dot gif uh, or gif. Uh, if you, you, you can do this uh, in mod rewrite as well, but it will require a, uh, a big file containing the numbers from 1 to 100. So it's, uh, if you ever need to do something like this, you can do it in mod Lua instead. And as you can see, it's quite easy. You just check if the URI equals slash random, then you change the URI to slash and then a random number and then dot gif and return OK. Or if the URI did not equal slash random, you return decline, meaning I did not do anything to this request, just carry on with the other modules that might have a hook here. Uh, the next example is a rudimentary load balancer, which has three different backends. And uh, as you can see, I'm hooking into the translate name just because I like hooking into that hook or face. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm telling Apache that the module that should handle <clears throat> this request is the proxy server module, the mod proxy. I'm telling it to be a reverse proxy request. And then I'm telling it to <clears throat> proxy it to one of these three. I'm randomly choosing one of these three backends. And then I'm turning declined, meaning 
pass this on. It doesn't mean I didn't do anything. It means pass this on to the next module that might be expected to also transform something in this phase. Um, another example would be getting rid of the skip flag in mod rewrite. I don't know how many of you have used the skip flag. None of you? Okay, we'll just skip it. <laughs> Um, no, but seriously, the, the, the point is that it adds uh, a tremendous amount of transparency. Instead of trying to figure out, uh, am I skipping one or two lines uh, in this rewrite, I can just see, okay, it's like this. If I do this, if something matches something, then, and you can clearly see the scope in which you're changing and, and, and where you're changing stuff and where you're not changing stuff. So uh, I. Well, I still use mod rewrite, but I also like to use this to add some transparency so I can see what am I actually doing and which path am I choosing. Um, you can also do mass virtual hosting, like mod vhost alias. This is quite simple. It's actually, I think you need the trunk version for this, but uh, this example shows you how to uh, set up a, a document root, then match the host name, incoming host name, and see if it matches something .example.com. Then you chop off the, the first bit and you add that to the document root and then you set the document root for the request to that. And that's uh, a quite simple way of adding mass virtual hosting by Amad Lua. For example, test.example.com would go to slash www slash example.com slash test in this example. Um, let's, uh, I need to speed up a bit. Uh, some access authentication and authorization. You can basically use ModLua for, for, for the AAA in two ways. You can uh, add a basic authentication handler. For example, this script uh, does much like what uh, Rich was talking about earlier when you had this uh, don't allow coworkers in between the hours of, uh, well, only allow them between 8 and 6 p.m. Uh, and this is a Lua version of how you would do that. Um, and you'll see I've extended it to say, okay, I want to only allow them in between this and this uh, hour, but I also want to check that it's only, it only applies to these four people. I can't do that in the, the if per se, but uh, if I implement an auth authorization uh, hook in Lua, I can, I can go in and I can uh, tailor it to be very specific in who do I allow, how do I allow them, when do I allow them, uh, and, and so on and so on. Um, another, ex uh, another interesting thing that you can do, I think it's in 2, 4, 3 and on, is the new Auth Z provider uh, you have in Mod Lua, which basically means you can add a, a required directive via Lua. Um, if you've seen Rich's talk, you would uh, have seen this require IP something, 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 or require not IP, or require all denied, require all granted, and so on and so on. And you can implement something uh, in Lua that makes a, that enables you to re do require foo, for example, and then that would want to function in Lua and check if, uh, if foo is okay or not okay. Uh, let me just show you an example of that. Uh, this is an example of a DNS blacklisting module that would allow us to say require a DNS blacklisting check and pass on uh, a DNS blacklisting host to the Mod Lua script. And on the next page you can see the DNS blacklisting check uh, function, which will just assume that it works, but basically it takes the provider that we just passed on the uh, this provider, it passes that on as this variable, which means we can, well, we, we start by looking in cache, and if it's cache, we, can, we return the cache, and so on and so on. Uh, but then we query the blacklisting provider and use this host name that was passed on in the configuration, uh, which means we can, we can 
pretty much make up any required directive that we want to use. Um, yeah. Uh, let me just continue on to some uh, scripting instead. And when I say scripting, I mean your basic your basic web applications. What you would usually use uh, PHP or ASP or JSP or CGI for. And it's um, it's pretty easy to set up in Modlua. Uh, what you do is you have your Files match uh, must like with PHP. You said that every file that matches dot Lua in the end, you set handler Lua script, or you can just do the add handler uh, directive, and and that's pretty much all you need to start using Mod Lua for web applications. Uh, so let's just take a simple PHP sample PHP script uh, that prints hello world or mruby script. I know the author of the mod mruby is somewhere in the crowd. Um, and you can turn it into a, a Lua script that sets the content type to text slash HTML and then prints or writes hello world and returns OK. Um, so uh, how fast is that? Well, it's, uh, it's also pretty darn fast, I can tell you. Um, what I mean by how fast is this is how fast can I print hello world and then just exit compared to PHP or mod and Ruby or mod Perl or whatever you would do or a static file and this is the result. As you can see with uh, one client it's pretty much even, but with 30 or 500 clients, uh, Modlua is doing about 40,000 requests per second on this uh, test machine. Uh, I tested it against Mod PHP with the APC, because PHP guys always complain if it's not with APC. Um, and I've also tested it against Mod Ruby, which claimed to be faster than Modlua, which is True, but not true. Um, you'll see I have a, a dark blue bar and I have a light blue bar. The light blue bar is what Malua would perform, how Malua will perform if you do not set the correct scope. And the, light, the dark blue is how Malua performs if you set the correct scope. And you'll see it's also faster than serving a static file. So it's, uh, it's pretty, well, it's very fast. Um, next, I'll be showing two examples of what we use Maldua for uh, in the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, we have currently, well, we have a lot of projects using Lua, but we have two projects using Maldua. The first one uh, using Maldua is uh, comments.apache.org, which was the first Lua-driven ASF site. And I say Maldua, it's actually called Modplua. It's a deri derivative of Malua, but it works, uh, it, it, it's basically the same. And the common system, as you can see, yada, 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 adds uh, <laughs> some uh, a commenting system to all projects that wish to make use of it. Uh, if, if any of you are a committer on a, a project that would like some commenting system on your website, you can just uh, ping me or anyone from the info team and we'll set you up. Uh, you can see an example screenshot here of how it works. It's most like Discuss or Live Fire or whatever you would use, except it's Apache software licensed. The second site we have, which is using genuine Mod Lua, is called modules.apache.org, which is uh, an old site, but it's also a new site in that it's been revamped uh, quite recently about one month ago, um, which is a place for module authors to present the modules for the HTTPD. Uh, and it, it also works as an aggregator fetching dope files around the world, uh, which is pretty cool, but nobody is using it yet. But uh, that's OK. And it, it also uses the, the comment system. But what's 
uh, interesting about modules at Apache.org is that it's the, as you can see, it's a starting using Modlua with database access for web applications. So we needed Modlua to be able to uh, connect to a database and do some queries and get some results. We, we could have used, uh, for example, Lua SQL or SQL, uh, but that's just, uh, in my opinion, it's a horrible library. It doesn't support prepared statements, and you cannot tie it into ModDBD. And ModDBD is quite ingenious because it allows four or five to six, seven, eight different modules to use the same database pool, which uh, means uh, a lot less resources used and uh, a lot faster responses. So we had some technical difficulties. Um, it was lagging, so the solution was we added some uh, database stuff to Malua, which is now in uh, Apache HTTP 244. And I'll just show you how it works. Uh, this is an example script that just uh, acquires uh, whatever database you have set up in, in ModDBD. Uh, and if that works, it fires over a query that selects a name from foo where one, uh, and then fetches all the rows and prints them out, and then closes it. And I want to stress that if you use this uh, DB acquire, you must always call DB close. It will close automatically if it's garbage collected, but uh, you will usually end up having all of your pool, all of your connections uh, being a, a sort of a keep alive state and not being returned to the pool. So please always remember to close them. Um, and sort of finally, uh, we're gonna go and see some goodies in trunk. And the first thing I want to show you is the filters that I talked about at the beginning. Uh, this is an input filter, um, which basically takes the PHP opening tag from any file that is uploaded and changes it to the HTML escaped version of it. Um, and if, uh, how many of you have uh, actually made a, a filter module in C? Oh, oh, whoa. That's a lot of people. Um, okay, so I have a lot of people here who should also know that it's not always that easy to make a, a filter in, in C, but uh, fortunately it's quite easy to make it in Lua because I've done all the very annoying work. Uh, and as you can see, it, all, it, it, it requires, well, five lines of code and you have a working filter in mod Lua. Um, the input directive is Lua input filter, much like the, the, how the hook directives work. And the, you'll see the, the, the first code, if, if any of you know what coroutines is in Lua, if you don't know it, you should look it up. Um, it's like the Lua version of threading where you can pause a function and then you can return to it at, at some other point. Um, the, the reason why you have to pause it at first, uh, you'll see up, up here, the reason why you have to pause it, I'll, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, but basically what this function is doing is just saying while there is a bucket, if it matches the PHP opening tag, then replace the PHP opening tag with an HTML escaped version of it, and then yield it back to the uh, Brigade or the next filter in, in the chain. Um, and the next example is an output filter, which is uh, sort of exciting because this is the Lua version of mod deflate, which is yay big. Uh, that's how fast you can add a deflate module to HTTPD. Um, and you'll see here that, that before I use my first yield in the, the coroutine, I'm setting some headers, and that's the point of this coroutine, coroutine yield, uh, is that I can set some headers, and then I can yield, which makes HTTPD resume, and then send out these headers, and then I can go on to, say, 
for each bucket, I will write them to the zlib stream, and I will flush it, and I will yield the deflated uh, result back to the uh, to HTTPD um, as a, a chunk of deflated content. So uh, you can do that in trunk if you like, and it's very fun to experiment with. Uh, you can also just do basic stuff like converting everything to uppercase or lowercase if you like that. Uppercase or lowercase. Ego. Um, the next thing is something I should be backporting. I don't know why I haven't. Uh, it's the <laughs> do a code cache option, which uh, basically enables mod Lua to run a stat on a file and recompile the bytecode if the file has changed. Uh, and if it has not changed, it will use the cached version. Currently, mod Lua never checks if a file has changed, so you have to. <laughs> I'm afraid to say so. You have to uh, reload, well, restart uh, HTTPD if uh, your file has changed. But if you use the trunk version, you can set this Lua code cache directive to stat, which will, um, in the case of hooks, it will run a stat and check if, if the file is uh, oh, I'm run, running out of time, I can see. Oh. Uh, well, uh, just set it to stat and you'll be fine. Uh, the next thing is a Lua map handler. We'll just skip that because it's uh, I ha I haven't figured out or why we have that yet, but it it, it looks fancy. It's sort of like a Lua version of of mod rewrite. You can rewrite a request to a certain script and uh, a, a a function handle where you can use back references. So you can map, for example, uh, slash foo slash abc to the foo dot Lua script and the ABC handle function. So uh, if, if anyone can figure out what to do with it, um, please come and tell me. Uh, we also have support for regex or glob uh, and the uh, expression parser. So you can, use, you can use the regular Lua patterns if you like speed. You can use the regex if you want something very advanced and it captures the whatever you want it to capture. And the glob support is uh, much like what you use in uh, the server alias directive. Um, and the expression is what you would use in an if statement. So you can evaluate an if statement um, as you can see. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's base64, MD5, SHA1, enco encoding, encryption, uh, HTML escaping, unescaping. You can retrieve server settings. You can change server settings on the fly if you dare. Uh, you can have scoreboard or worker information like uh, mod status. And um, we'll just have an example of that. This is what mod status looks like in Lua. Uh, and if I can just uh, show you real quick, if it works. Uh, it does not work, I'm afraid. But it has a live update, a real time update of. Uh, what your server is doing and uh, the load and so on and so on. So that's cool. That's just, as you can see, it changes. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, some optimization techniques. As I said, uh, use the thread scope for all requests so you get the dark blue bar and not the light blue bar as I showed in the chart earlier. If you can't afford a thread scope, use a server scope, which is kind of like ModDBD pool, which just grabs a Lua state from the pool and then releases it back when it's not being used. You can use that, uh, as you see at the bottom, to create a, a smaller pool that's smaller than the number of states you have and those uh, use less memory. Uh, unless you make it leak, in which case you should use the once or the connection scope. Um, as I said, by default, it does not start scripts. 
so uh, please use Lua Codecast, set it to stat if you can. Uh, and finally, always import libraries into the global scope, as you can see. Declare master constants and require stuff before you have your function. Do not declare them within your function. And we are really running out of time, so I'll just um, skip past the C stuff and uh, ask if there are any questions. With a, given a patchy hook, uh, we also have uh, the ability to say run very first, run last, run somewhere in the middle, yeah. so that you can reprioritize which uh, which hook handler uh, is going to uh, react first. Yeah. Uh, I, looking at your examples, is there a way to refine that control? Yeah, you can you can make it run first or last. Um, I, I, I don't think it's all hooks that have this ability, but most hooks have the first, last, and middle. So if you look at the, uh, the Modlua documentation, you can see which of the hooks uh, can be hooked first, last, middle. So it's, um, it's possible. It's, it's in the code, at least. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's definitely possible. And What's the overhead of the garbage collector look like, assuming that you've got it configured for the best scope? Um, I was kind of thinking about that mod deflate example. Like, it looks like you might be shoving a string like uh, shoving the entire contents of whatever the request is um, as a Lua string and then bringing it back out. I was wondering if that was going to really impact the garbage collection if you've measured the CPU overhead. Can, can you speak up a bit? Sure. I'm wondering about the garbage collection overhead, assuming that you have it set with the best possible scope as you described, yeah. um, especially in that deflate example where it looks like the entire contents of uh, a request body might be shoved into a Lua oh, string. Oh, no, 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 up. that's not what happens. It's, um, let me just go back. Now, what happens is uh, a, a chunk of the request body, if, if it's this you're wondering about, um, it's, it's a bucket that gets shoved in and deflated. So it's uh, a couple of kilobytes at most at the time, which then, uh, and, and once you've uh, deflated it and <clears throat> pushed it back to HTTPD, the uh, deflated content goes out of scope and it gets garbage collected. So you'll be using um, a, th a thread generally uses between 50 and 200 kilobytes of memory per, per, per Lua state. So, uh, so if you have a hot server is serving a lot of requests and it's you know, bringing these chunks of memory in and out, like what's the percentage of CPU time that's, uh, or what, what's the kind of the CPU overhead of the garbage collector? I'm, I'm sorry? What is the CPU overhead of the garbage collector? I have no idea, actually. <laughs> Anybody else? Nope. Okay, well, uh, thank you for listening to my rambling. And we'll have some uh, lightning talks in here in a minute, I guess. So uh, thank you.